Welcome back to the Parkinson's Doctor's channel. This is Dr. Ramos Rodriguez, a neurologist and movement disorder specialist in Orlando, Florida. And today we are in the second of the series, a uh, second video of the series about how is Parkinson's disease diagnosed. And in the previous video, we were talking about the prodromal symptoms that can be uh, appreciated in people with Parkinson's disease. And probably the most critical ones are decreased sense of smell, constipation, REM behavior disorder. I probably can say that if a person has those three uh, signs or symptoms, I believe that in the future they're going to develop something like Parkinson's disease or very similar to Parkinson's disease. In this video, we will discuss what is the diagnostic testing that is typically done and why is it that your doctor is requesting that test? And I will be uh, discussing the testing that I like to personally do in my clinic to have a better understanding and, and help my patients better. However, every doctor might be a little bit different and they might have some testing that they prefer based on their experience or they have done some research and they found it to be useful and so on. So uh, today we will be talking about what probably most of the doctors are doing in the in the uh, neurology clinic. Um, and this is what the way that we like to do it in our clinic. So, you know, we'll go ahead and, and move on and talk about it. So the first thing that we need to understand is that Parkinson's disease is not the only condition that causes rigidity, tremors, bradykinesia, or balance problems. And remember that the rigidity is the stiffness, typically seen in people with Parkinson's disease. The tremor is the shaking. The bradykinesia is the usual slowness. And then balance issues are something, so one of the symptoms that a lot of people might even notice early in the disease. And many other conditions might cause these similar symptoms. So how is it that we can tell? How do we know? So for the person, you know, for the doctor to be able to diagnose somebody with Parkinson's disease, we as doctors like to order some testing to help us understand a little bit better what is going on. So before we move on to the testing, let's, let's go over uh, you know, the, the one aspect that I believe is critical, right? And this is not a, a test that we order. This is something that we have to do in the clinic. So the first thing that we like to do is a review of medications that the person is taking. And this is a very careful examination of the current and the past medicines that the person is using or, or has taken before, including prescription drugs, over-the-counter medicines, supplements, or herbal remedies. And some medications may cause side effects that resemble Parkinson's symptoms, such as antipsychotics, anti-nausea drugs, or antidepressants. So you see that some mental health medicines or medicines used to treat nausea and vomiting might uh, induce or provoke symptoms that uh, can look very much like Parkinson's disease. And some medications also are very, known, very well known to interact with Parkinson's medicines affecting their effectiveness or safety. So it is very important that we have a good understanding about what medicines uh, you have tried before, and the reason is that there is a condition called drug-induced Parkinsonism or drug-induced Parkinson's, which is not true Parkinson's disease, the one that is having the Lewy bodies in the brain, and we spoke about this uh, uh, before. This is just something related to the medicine, and if that is actually the situation, it can be potentially reversible. Now, the next test, that the first test that we like to order is an MRI of the brain. And this is a non-invasive imaging technique using magnetic fields to create very detailed pictures of the brain. And it can help rule out other causes of movement disorders, such as strokes, tumors, uh, sometimes infections might cause uh, movement disorders. And it can also show brain structure or function changes related to Parkinson's disease, such as atrophy, reduce blood flow, or even abnormal iron deposit. So these are things that we can see on an MRI of the brain, and this is why this is probably the first test that we like to order. The second thing that we order is blood work, and this is laboratory analysis of the blood sample. And in this case, we might be checking for infection, inflammation, anemia, problems with your thyroid, problems with your kidneys, 
or any other conditions that can mimic or even worsen Parkinson's disease. And it can also measure the levels of certain hormones. The most common one that we measure is uh, TSH. I personally like to measure vitamins and, and other minerals. And uh, sometimes depending on what medications you're taking, we might do some uh, medication levels because sometimes they might affect the brain function or uh, production of dopamine. So, so depending if you're taking a particular class of medication, uh, mostly mental health medicines, right? Um, uh, we, we like to do that uh, to have a better understanding. In uh, some cases, I like to order an electroencephalogram. And this is a test that measures the brain's electrical activity. I always compare it with an EKG. So the EKG is to measure uh, uh, the electrical activity of the heart. It actually provides really good information for many years uh, primary care doctors or cardiologists use that to have a better understanding about what is going on in the heart. Uh, with an EEG, it can help me detect abnormal brain waves that may indicate seizures, dementia, or other neurological diagnosis that may coexist with Parkinson's disease or complicate the, uh, the, the diagnosis. So this is something that it, it's all patient uh, dependent, you know, uh, people that have episodes of, of uh, confusion, alteration in mental status, uh, alteration in awareness, people that are kind of spacing out occasionally, uh, you know, those patients, uh, are, we might be able to begin ordering an EEG in order to understand a little bit better what is going on. The next diagnostic test that I will discuss is a DAT scan. And a DAT scan is a type of nuclear imaging test. And now we're using a radioactive tracer that binds to dopamine transporters in the brain, and it can help visualize the amount and the distribution of the dopamine neurons in the brain and show if there is a significant loss or asymmetry, which is characteristic of people with Parkinson's disease. It can also help differentiate Parkinson's disease from other types of conditions such as drug-induced or vascular Parkinsonism. So once again, you know, the, the that can many people believe that it is diagnostic of Parkinson's disease, but in fact, it helps me understand a little bit better what is going on in the brain, but it doesn't tell me if a person has what we call idiopathic Parkinson's disease or not. And then after this, in my own practice, I like to do some cognitive testing. And these are the series of tests that assess the mental ability of the person, such as memory, attention, language, reasoning, problem solving, and executive function. And it can help identify cognitive impairment or dementia that may occur in some people with Parkinson's disease and affect their quality of life and treatment options. And actually, I like to do this cognitive test in the first visit because it helps me establish a baseline. Sometimes it is actually not easy to make that final diagnosis and Following the, the progression of the cognitive symptoms in, in this population might help me understand a little bit better what is happening on the brain and even uh, clarify what the diagnosis is. So once again, you know, cognitive testing uh, is, is very important in the Parkinson's disease uh, community. Now, this test can help confirm or rule out Parkinson's disease already based on the symptoms that I had before. So none of them is, the, is diagnostic, right? None of them tells me if this person has Parkinson's disease. However, it helps me understand a little bit better what is happening and putting this together with the medical history, this is how I can make the final diagnosis of Parkinson's disease. So I'm gonna now uh, make a pause here I'm going to let you absorb uh, this information. And uh, just like we did with the previous video, I will. I am putting a summary of this video at the uh, uh, learnaboutparkinson.com uh, website, which is the website with that we are uh, utilizing uh, to have the information that we're discussing in these videos. And you can find a lot of more information about Parkinson's disease there, make sure that um, uh, you go there and you can um, uh, download a script, you know, a copy of the script of this uh, presentation uh, today. So you can look at it again and it will help you understand a little bit better if there was something that you missed or you did not understand well.
Thank you again. I really appreciate your attention. Make sure that you subscribe to the uh, video to receive a um, notification. And then the next video, we're going to talk about how we put all these together, right? You know, how does a person with Parkinson's disease looks like and I can uh, finally make uh, the proper diagnosis. Thank you very much and until the next video. Bye-bye.